Hello, 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 YouTube! My name is Rana B, and welcome back to another episode of my RuPaul Drag Race review. Moving straight on into the episode, we have obviously the aftermath of last week's um, elimination with Dusty, and Monet is reflecting basically that a lot of the New York girls have not been showing their full potential. The only ones who have ironically, are Aquaria and Cracker. But Monet was in the bottom last week and two other New York girls have gone home. So she has a lot more motivation to do well, to prove herself as a New York girl and just as a queen in general to do better. Then we have um, Asia feeling used um, and motivated to compete for herself since obviously last time on the runway, she was, although the judges saw what she was doing, as being a helpful motherly type of a figure that it was distracting her from what she needed to do in the competition. So, so Asia is also in a place where she needs to really motivate herself to do better. And also we had the Vixen basically blaming Eureka for the whole thing that happened in Untucked last week. I'm sorry, girl, but no. You're the one who made a big deal out of the situation when Eureka didn't even want to talk about anything. She just wanted to go have a cigarette, have, you know, relax, da 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 and you're the one who blew up in her face and you wouldn't let her talk. And she was trying to get her piece and you wouldn't even give her a piece. So I don't buy the whole thing that you were playing Miss Victim Vixen because that is not cute. We did have another mini challenge this week and it's basically to drag up military wear and do a little strut and make up their own little backstories, da 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 da. And the winner from that was, was freaking Vixen. Again, girl. No, <laughs> I thought a ton of the other girls had better concepts and better looks than she did. I will admit hers was okay, but there were other ones who I thought did better. So I did not like that at all. And because she did win um, the mini challenge, she gets to pick her partner for the maxi challenge as well as set up the other girls. And the maxi challenge was the Bossy Rossi talk show, which was gonna be an improv acting challenge. So Vixen decides to pick Asia, for her team. Then she sets up Blair and Monique, Monet and Cameron, Cracker and Mayhem, and Aquaria and Eureka. Now, obviously, at the end there, she was gonna put the two against each other. In her mind, it was basically, you know, you two were so negative toward me, and you are my enemy, so if both of you end up in the bottom, one of you is gonna go home. And even, the only time I think I can really recall this happening as far as pairing was concerned, was when Shangela did this in season three, um, not All Stars three, season three, and she would like pick girls and put them against each other if they didn't like them, or in the comedy challenge, she put some girls in certain spots to give her or her friends a better um, position in the judging, da, da 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 I'm sorry, that was just pure shade. That was pure shade. So the Vixen and Asia, they get obsessed with me, their theme for the Bossy Rossi, Blair and Monique get married a cactus, an affair between uh, the two girls and the cactus, which is a little weird. Uh, Monet and Cameron get freaky addiction ruining my life, and uh, Cracker and Mayhem got fear of pickles, and Aquaria and Eureka got sexy babies. And another thing that added another check mark to the reasons why I don't like Vixen is when she I, and great that I could, I could get this misconstrued because they both were on the same team. However, I saw it as being Vixen's idea or she really motivated this idea of doing a parody version, well, not even a parody version, but a, a thing about Aquarian and Cracker because they do get compared for looking alike and that's what their whole thing is. So they thought, oh, this will be cute. Girl, how much shade are you trying to throw on every single person in this goddamn competition? I'm sorry, she is one of the shadiest queens I have ever seen in the history of Drag Race. I just, uh, I'm gonna move on before I go on a rant. We go over to Mayhem and Crackers, a group, and they, basically, the question is, can Mayhem live up to Cracker in acting? Because Cracker is very, very good at acting and doing stuff like that. She's a very funny person. Can Mayhem set, can she at all be on the same level as Cracker? Because that's a lot to live up to. And then Asia goes and talks to Monet about what her and Vixen are doing. Monet lives for it. And but I feel like Monet, because of where she, in the New York scene, I guarantee there's plenty of shady queen. And she's used to having this kind of a thing, but she lives for it. So I don't like the idea of encouraging that. 
But hey, I'm not there, and Monet, she probably does live for it. She likes the drama, so you know what? Uh, let her believe if she wants. Also, um, I keep going back and forth on Queen, so I apologize for that. But I was so, I was laughing so hard at all of Cracker's uh, confessionals. She was just so funny. She was throwing shade at Vixen for her, you know, not having friends, which for me, being that I don't like Vixen very much, that was like, I gave her a million applause for that. That was good. She made a lot of different other uh, comments to it that I can't remember off the top of my head, but she was killing me in her confessionals. So I loved uh, Cracker this episode. I really did. All right, now moving on to the actual, um, to the actual shows. So first we have Blair and Monique. Now obviously Blair was gonna do pretty well since she is a theater queen. She's trained in improv, trained in theater, so she's used to this. The one question was Monique, how was she going to bring in this character? But I think she really played to her strengths. Both were in character, uh, Blair being like the, you know, the housewife, rather conservative type of a thing. Um, and then Monique was like kind of like <laughs> the girl who was like, I don't want to say the typical person that would be on a show like this, but when you think of someone to be on that show, you think of what Monique looked like. So I thought that was funny. And there was an almost slip up when Blair, you know, says Banji, which was their code word. Um, and there was a really, there was, could have been a major train wreck right there. But Monique picked it up. She saved it, did very, very well. So I will, in the acting challenge, I will give Blair middle of the road and then I'll give Monique a high because I did, th Monique really did surprise me, especially since she's been safe a lot this season. I was really happy to see her kind of rise up to the occasion. Next up is Monet and Cameron and Monet was stuttering and I see her charm in the challenge. It was there, but it wasn't like over the top enough, like what you would, you would expect from a show like this. And then comes, oh, I should probably say, uh, Monet is um, is addicted to eating her hip pads. And then Cameron comes out and she's uh, she's addicted to uh, smelling her tucking panties, which is a little bizarre. Granted, I mean, I we see those shows like My Strange Addiction, so I can't even say that that's the strangest thing that's probably been on that show. Anyway, um, loved Cameron's outfit. It was so like, kind of white trash and you know someone you would expect to and granted she's also from Nashville so I, I guarantee that she's probably seen many people look and dress like that so I thought that was funny and actually Cameron outshined Monet which was very interesting because Cameron was afraid that you know Monet would outshine her because Monet is a comedy girl I just loved Cameron in this I thought she was fabulous so I will give Cameron a high and sadly I will give Monique um, a bottom because it was not Especially given her reputation, it was just not, not good. All right, moving on to Mayhem and Cracker. Now, in the beginning, Mayhem, she, her personality just wasn't like up to speed with what she was trying to convey. Cause she could have taken this character so, so far beyond, especially when Cracker comes out in a freaking pickle costume. And she could have like, in my opinion, if I were playing Monique's character, I would be, the minute she walked out, I would be like screaming. I would be hiding behind the chair. I would be hiding behind Ross. Um, that's probably what I would do, but she kind of just like looked just uncomfortable, which I think if you had like a pathological fear of pickles that like you wouldn't even want to be like 10 feet in the same, uh, in the same room with someone dressed or dressed as a pickle or it is a pickle. Um, in the beginning, Cracker was a little bit, I would say probably a little too smart for the room where she just didn't make a joke that everyone else would catch on to. But the minute she brought out that box and M Mayhem's like, it's long, it, it's big and you know, <laughs> and then obviously Ross going, is there a hole in that box? And then Cracker's like, absolutely. <laughs> it was just so, so, so funny. And then obviously she comes out like saying, I am a pickle. And then that's where it kind of like escalated a little bit further. Overall, I wouldn't say Mayhem was terrible, but she wasn't the best either. So I did put her at the bottom and I did give Cracker a higher score because although she did start off slow, she ended very, very well and her comedy quirks were there. So that's how I rank that. Next is uh, the one we were all kind of looking at, which was gonna be Vixen in Asia. I just found Vixen boring and she even broke character. She was laughing at Ross's jokes and she should have just been in character um, or at least like be in character and laugh at the joke, you know, don't break your character 
and then try to recover because that just proves that you don't know what you're doing. And then when Asia comes out, even Asia, and I think she did better than Vixen, I still think it just wasn't as good um, either way. And I think that they were just so caught up on the fact that, oh, they're ripping, you know, Aquaria and Cracker that I think they lost track of what they really needed to do for the challenge. I will admit the ending was funny with, you know, Vixen regaling her wig and then Asia did the same thing. I thought that was funny, but it was just not the best, not the best thing that happened in this episode. So I gave Vixen the low score and I did give Asia um, middle of the road because hers was a little bit better than Vixen. Finally, we end with Aquaria and Eureka. And I was actually pleasantly, Aquaria has been pleasantly surprising me most of this season. She came out, she looked the part, she actually was in character and she held her own, which was great because when Eureka came out, just, you know, almost naked, dressed as a baby, and just owned that character. I mean, she owned the whole room. She owned everything. She was hilarious. And I, and I, you know, Aquaria was able to keep up, especially when she did the, you know, I'm, you know, you look like Evangelista, you look like a model, you know, it was just, oh, it was so good. It was so funny. I thought, I think, I think the closest one to being the best that week would have been Blair and Monique, but this one by far was the better of, was the better out of all of the improvs. So I did give Aquaria the middle of the road, although I was impressed with her. And then I gave Eureka the high. So quickly moving on to events that happened before the runway. Vixen wants to hear from the judges since she's been safe this whole time, but Asia doesn't want to be in that situation where she could be on the bottom again because she's already experienced that and she didn't like it. So it's a conflict there. Vixen, obviously, like we had some foreshadowing earlier, she was badmouthing Eureka. And while they were getting their makeup ready, Mayhem does bring up the tension between the two. So she was in that untucked and she was like so confused as to why these girls were just like battling it out for no goddamn reason. So she brings it up to Vixen and then Eureka sits down and they talk. And in the beginning it was a little rocky, but then Eureka brings up her struggles with bullying and people, people beating on her, her father, uh, other people throughout her life and that this whole thing with Vixen has kind of brought in a little bit of that up. And then Vixen, to an extent, does relate to it as well because she is such an abrasive person. So I'll give credit for Vixen showing a little bit of a softer side. I don't think it's enough, especially since she's done a lot of, sh especially in this episode and plus last Untucked, she did a lot of shady shit. So I don't think it's, en it's enough to clean her slate, but it is like a little glimmer into a softer spot of her. So hopefully we can get some more um, explanation to Vixen later on in the season, if she even lasts that long. And then moving on to the runway, uh, the theme is denim and diamonds, which by my makeup, I've got some diamond jewelry on, I've got some diamond headbands in, and then I basically try to do a lot of blue makeup for denim with a little bit of sparkle, and then I've got my denim jacket on. So let's move on to the runway. First up is Miss Monet Exchange. This was really disappointing, and I'm and I hate to say that just Monet has not been bringing it to the runway. She really hasn't. I love like the boobs or the boobs and hips up. That was all good, but I'm sorry that that jumpsuit it was so unfitted. It should have been like a skinny leg or at least a cigarette leg. It shouldn't have been so loose because it just it just like had the weirdest shape when she walked it did not look cute so i will give her middle of the road because the top was good her hair was good and it was just that the bottom half was just not not cute on her so i gave her middle of the road next is cameron this was absolutely adorable this was absolutely adorable um i just love the way cameron can play with looks because you know she's done sinister she's done fashion she's done more comedy, you know, and this kind of leans in toward like the glam comedy section because she looks so much like a girl from the Midwest, being that I am from the Midwest myself. Um, it just looks so country, and she even said like Dolly Parton, and it, it's definitely obvious with the fit with the big boobs and the big blonde hair. I thought she looked absolutely adorable, so I gave that a high runway. Next is the Vixen, and again, like last week, I do have to admit. I did actually like this look. I like the idea that she played with um, the mostly silver um, jumpsuit, but then she had this like mermaid silhouette with the denim. I love the jewels. I will admit her hair 
uh, was a lot, her makeup and hair looked a lot better today than it had in the past, so it kills me, but I'll give that a high runway as well. Next is Asia O'Hara. I gave this a low. This was not good to me. It was just too much going on. And this could have looked great had she edited a little bit more. Like, I don't know if I would have had the hat. It was a little too much. The fact that it's denim fringe, it's a denim hat, plus denim acid wash on the bottom as a train. It was just too much. And even the hair, it looked too glam for the look. I just think it was just a hodgepodge of way too much denim. And I didn't get that much diamond. I really didn't. I, I mean, there's some sparkle, but compared to other looks, it just wasn't enough. So I did give uh, Asia a boot on this. Next is Aquaria. This, again, was very, very cute. You can always you can always rely on Aquaria to give you a good look. This was absolutely adorable. I love, I really want that fan. I really want that denim diamond fan. It looks so cool. And the way she played with it, it was so cute. I love the outfit, the hat fit worked, the shoes worked, the makeup looked good. I just thought overall this was a great look for Aquaria, so I gave her a high runway as well. Next is Eureka O'Hara, and I don't know, like, I kind of wish she had played more with the diamond aspect because I don't really get it that much in this look compared to some of the, again, compared to some of the other girls. I did think she looked country. She looked the, the part, she, the hair was cute, the makeup was good. And for her to pull off a jumpsuit, it's a big risk for her because not all big girls probably feel comfortable wearing a, like a jumpsuit like this. I did think it worked for her body. I just wish there was a little bit more of an umph to it. So I did give this middle of the road. Next is Miss Blair St. Clair. And I went back and forth on this. I don't know, like parts, like I love the look and I love the hair with the bow. I just feel like they should have been with different looks. You know what I mean? The hair looked very 80s to me, especially with that big bow. And I didn't see 80s really in the look she was wearing. That looked more like 90s style. At least to me, it looked more 90s style. So I feel like just the, it was a little off. Something, part of, part of me likes it, part of me is like, this doesn't really fit that well. So I will give her middle of the road because there's parts of it I like, but she should have like done different hair or maybe not even done the look and done something else, so. Next is Miss Monique Hart. And in the beginning when I look at it, because I'll get to the part in a second, it looked okay. It again, kind of felt like ages. It was a little bit of a mishmash, but then she does the reveal to this giraffe or brown cow <laughs> uh, pattern. And I actually think it made it look a little bit better. I actually liked it with the giraffe. It was, a, it was a twist. I liked it. The hair was good, very big blonde hair. And I just feel like overall it was okay. So I did, if I, if it had just been that first look, I would have given middle of the road, but the giraffe really kind of brought it over for me and I gave it a high runway. Next is Mayhem Mila. And this, the minute I saw it, I thought, oh my God, it's so cute. This is just so adorable. It's so cute. It's very toddlers and tiara, which I think they did reference in the judging. Um, it's just so cute. I will admit, is it really denim? Is that, if it is denim, it doesn't look like denim. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing in this case, but I love the look. It was so cute. Love the hat, love the dress, love the boots. I loved everything about it. So definitely a high runway for Miss Mayhem. And then finally we have Miss Cracker to end it all off. This was just, I mean, it's typical Cracker. It's cute, it's fashion, but it's goofy. I mean, she came out and those pigtails that were just standing up on their own, like it would have been my hair had it looked, you know, kind of se kind of semi like this. And obviously she opens her mouth and she's got the like Bugs Bunny buck teeth. It was just so, and you think that would make her look ugly, but it just adds to the whole look. It makes her look so cute. And I love that jumpsuit. It's just so glam. It's just, I don't know. She just does such a good job of mixing glam and comedy. And that's what I really love about her. So definitely a high runway for Ms. Cracker. So our uh, safe queens are Blair, Aquaria, Asia, and Cameron. And then tops are Monique, Cracker, and Eureka. And our bottoms are Monet, Mayhem, and Vixen. We did have a little moment with um, Cameron uh, basically saying a thank you to Shania Twain, who was one of the guest judges this week. And it was just so cute. You just saw how nervous she was and how amazed that she, you know Shania was standing right in front of her. So that was cute. On the runway, Vixen was being defensive about her acting ability. And 
again, it's just like, girl, girl. And it's just the, just bad taste in my mouth. We had the brown cow pattern situation, which I thought was hilarious. Apparently no one is taught Monique what a giraffe pattern is compared to a, a cow pattern. <laughs> Um, so I thought that was funny. And then we had like a RuPaul, RuPaul like basically having PTSD with the whole Vanji situation because um, Ru didn't know what she was saying, which I thought was hilarious. And and uh, Michelle just kept beating it in, beating it in. It was just, it was just hilarious. So as of our tops and bottoms, I do agree with pretty much everything um, that the judges were saying. I thought Eureka by far was the better out of the tops. Although I thought Monique did very, very well. And I will agree that, um, I guess in a sense, Mayhem, in my opinion, wasn't as terribly bad. Obviously because of her um, outfit, I thought that raised up the bar a lot. And Mon Monet just was not good and Vixen just wasn't good. So our winner ends up being Eureka, which was a very sentimental moment for her, especially since the last, in this same week, last season, it was the episode she went home on for her injury. But this time she wins, so I was very happy for Eureka and it was highly, highly deserved. And our bottoms were Monet and Mayhem. I'm sorry, even, even though I liked the look, I thought the acting by far was worse on Vixen's part. I just, I would have seen her, granted also this is just me saying because I don't like Vixen very much, I would have loved to see her in the bottom. But nope, she was safe. So let's go ahead and just watch the reaction to Monet and Mayhem. This is gonna be intense. Wait! Oh, hi. Mayhem's being a little too cutesy. Okay, that was a little lackluster. She's literally walking around with her her jumpsuit around her ankles. So, yes, sadly, one of my favorites, I was so excited to see her this season, and one of my other favorite queens to go, Mayhem, was the one who was eliminated. I was so sad because I loved Mayhem. She was the queen that I knew who she was before she came into Drag Race, and I just wanted to see more of her, and I'm so sad that she's gone, And I, but that's the way the game goes, so it is sad. But we have to move on, and Monet's got a lot to live up to since she's been in the bottom twice. So she's got to really step her game up if she's got any chance to stay in the competition. Or she's going to be the next N NY queen to go. So next week, the challenge is going to be creating a DragCon panel, which will be really, really interesting since they've done something similar to this in All-Stars 2 when they had to create, like, 
um, signature merchandise for their own drag race panel or shop or whatever. So that'll be interesting to see what these girls come up with, how original they can be, or if they're just gonna stick to norms. Um, and they're also gonna pick their own teams. And with some of these girls, that's going to be a little bit maybe of a drama stir. Don't know what's going to happen, but it is going to be interesting. And obviously, we can expect more drama. That's always a given for these episodes. So, I think that's actually it. So, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. If you guys like it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me comments down below. What did you think of this week's episode? And if you want to see my future videos or videos I've already done, go ahead, hit subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when my videos come out. That's all I have for you guys today, and until the next video, bye! Mwah.